Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Thank God for Jesus this morning. Amen. And we're not going to be very long today, but there is a, a word from the Lord. I do have some good news. Amen. Amen. Uh, according to uh, our bishop this past week, they posted uh, online that they had done the appointments for the 2020-2021 session of uh, the annual conference. And as you all know, Palestine United Methodist Church, that uh, we are appointed yearly to the position of pastors in the different churches. And I stand here proudly to announce this morning that I am the new pastor of Palestine United Methodist Church. Uh, the bishop and the cabinet appointed me to another year of being the pastor here at Palestine. And I thank God for that position and I thank God that we are going to do some great things this coming year. Amen. We just got to continue to hold on. Amen. Amen. Uh, got that out the way. Bishop, all the bishop also sent out a letter uh, of when we are to open back up our churches. As you all know, we're not independent churches. We're under the umbrella. We're under the Tupelo District Mississippi Conference and uh, the United Methodist Church as a whole. And uh, they sent a letter out and said he would advise us not to open church for corporate worship until after May the 31st. May the 31st. And then there will not, there will not be a decision left only to the clergy. That decision also will include the loyalty uh, of the churches. So in the next coming days and weeks, I will be calling uh, individual members of the church and finding out their opinion on uh, opening back up and some ideas on uh, uh, following the CDC side guidelines as we continue uh, honoring our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So in the next coming weeks, we're going to be busy and there are going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to uh, vocalize with one another, but be encouraged. God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Again, again, I wish you a happy Mother's Day, Facebook land. Amen. And it's good to be here. Amen. It's good to be here. It's good to stand before God's people one more time. Here at Palestine United Methodist Church, uh, the Palestine United Methodist women uh, wanted to celebrate Mother's Day by honoring our first lady, my lovely wife, Miss Gloria McIntyre, with lovely roses and a beautiful card. And I thank you, Palestine. They also honored the six oldest women of Palestine United Methodist Church. Uh, Miss Bernice Spurgeon, Happy Mother's Day. Miss Clara Ruff, Happy Mother's Day. Miss Mary Helen Clay, Happy Mother's Day. Miss Minnie Leeper, Happy Mother's Day. Miss Eddie Mae Westbrook, Happy Mother's Day. And Miss Geneva Burke, Happy Mother's Day. And Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers here of Palestine United Methodist Church. Not only biological mothers, but mothers that have taken the mother's position in this church and in their homes and in this community. <laughs> Thank God for you, and we thank God for what he is continually doing in your life. I thank God that God has given us mothers. Amen. Amen. When I came here to Palestine United Methodist Church, I had, uh, my mother had been deceased for quite a few years, and my grandmother had passed, and, and I was just like that old song, I was a motherless child. But when I came to Palestine and all the beautiful mothers that were here and y'all allowed, shared them with me and my wife. And we thank God for that today. Thank God for sharing 
your mothers with us today. Amen. So we're going to go ahead on and, and, and give you some good news. Amen. For today, we have probably been listening to the news all week long. We're still in the midst of the pandemic. But guess what? We're still in the midst of God's spirit also. Amen. Man, the numbers said that it's going up every day. The numbers said that we had in uh, Monroe County, and one of our closest counties, some of reside in Monroe County, is one of the highest uh, places, a hot spot, they said, in the state of Mississippi. Amen. In our region, Monroe County, Lee County, and Chickasaw uh, following right behind them. So, or Clay County. So we're, we're all bunched there together and the pandemic is real. But our God is real also. So no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But we must follow CDC guidelines. And we must also follow what God says in his holy book. Amen. Amen. So today, I, not only do I have a message for the mothers, I have a message for anyone who has an ear to hear. Amen? Amen. So we're going to start off by praying for all our sick and shut-ins here at Palestine United Methodist Church. Amen. We're going to start uh, praying for our youth and our children. Amen. We're going to pray for this community of Nellerton, Mississippi. Amen. We're going to Pray for the surrounding communities also. And we're going to pray for those that uh, said, when you pray, will you pray for me? We're going to pray for those that uh, we can't even remember their name. But God knows their name. He knows every hair on their head. Amen. I want to thank God this morning for my son in the ministry also, Brother Joseph Ivy, for taking part out of his his schedule to come and be with me and giving getting this word out to God's people. Amen. I know his heart is is, is heavy this morning. Uh, as you know, his mother was a member here at Palestine United Methodist Church, and we honor her her memory this morning. Uh, call me every day, almost, especially on Saturdays, and tell me to bring her a watermelon. <laughs> God bless her, but. Not only the day Mother's Day, but to her birthday uh, fell on this day also. So we want to say rest in peace. Happy Mother's Day, Sister Ernestine. Amen. 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 If you would, would you pray with me, please? In the name of Jesus. Father. We thank you right now for Jesus. We thank you that he is our righteousness. And because of him, we can stand right in your presence right now and expect to receive answers to our prayers. We are thankful this morning that Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Thankful that he was redeemed us from the curse of the law. Thankful that he took our infirmities and bore our sickness, and by his stripes we are healed. And because of Jesus, we have overcome sickness and disease. Because of Jesus, we have overcome COVID-19. Because of Jesus, we have overcome all things that come up against us by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We will sing songs of praise this morning. We will sing songs of joy this morning. Lord, we thank you that we have divine healing. We have divine help this morning. And we have faith that grows stronger and stronger each passing day. Father God, we lift up your name this morning. We lift up every name that has been called on our prayer list this morning. 
We lift up every name the ones that who told us to pray for them, Lord, and we stand in agreement with them right now that is already done in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we magnify your name. You are Lord Almighty. You are wonderful counsel. You are shelter in the midst of a storm. Right now, Lord, as we continue to go into this message this morning, we ask you to move whatever trying to hold your people back. We ask you to move it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Give them a listening ear and turn that old stony heart into a heart of flesh. Father God, we love you and we praise you. And we will continue to praise you, not just for a short while, but we will bless your name forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. We welcome you again to Palestine United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Maurice McIntosh. Amen. And I thank God for another opportunity and another chance to stand before God's people and give him the honor and glory that he deserves. Amen. Amen. Before I get in this message, and I, I feel like praising God this morning, church. I feel like praising God this morning, church. If I could just get somebody somewhere to just praise the Lord with me. Ain't he been good to you? He's been mighty good to me. Meals every day, roof over my head, amen. Took care of my children, my family and friends every day. That's enough right there just to praise him. Then he woke me up this morning, started me on my way once again. I just feel like praising God this morning. As I stand here, I think about all the stories in the Bible about how, how we praise God. I, I, I think about in, in 2 Chronicles and in, in, in around the 20th chapter where, where the king Jehoshaphat, where, where there were three kings that had come in alliance against him, was, had them come in and was going to attack him. And they were outnumbered. And the Lord came and gave Jehoshaphat a personal message. And told Jehoshaphat, the battle is not yours, it's the Lord. And this is what Jehoshaphat did. Instead of putting a vast army up against the three kings and their army, Jehoshaphat got what we will call the praise team, the choir, and put the choir and the praise team on the front line. And they began to praise God and sing songs unto God. And guess what? The enemy was defeated. They were defeated with a praise team. If I could get just somebody out there this morning to praise the Lord with me. Lord, I thank you. Lord, thank you for what you have done in my life. Thank you for what you're doing in their life, Lord. Lord, let them know that you inhabit the praises of his people. Lord, we praise you right now for what you already done. We're praising you right now for what you're getting ready to do. We praise you right now that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We praise you right now that you we are blessed going out and blessed coming back in. We're praising you right now, Lord. Thank you for everything that you have done for us. Lord, we're praising you right now. God inhabits the praises of his people. Lord, I, I'm just full this morning. I'm full. And I thank God for the fullness. Amen. On this beautiful Mother's Day. Amen. If you would, turn with me to Matthew, the book of Matthew. Matthew, the seventh chapter. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I get to talking about the Lord. I get excited because I know what he has done for me. I get excited because God is good and he's good all the time. And all the time, God is good. 
Amen. Thank God. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Beginning at the 13th verse. I'm not going to be long. I want to read verse 13 and 14. I will be reading out of the New International Version of the Bible. And this portion of scripture is in red, which means that it is Jesus speaking first person. Amen. And these are the actual words of Jesus. So understand that Jesus is talking to us this morning. Amen. And it reads, enter through the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life. And only a few find it. The word of God for God's people. Amen. I bring you greetings and I bring you again the good news this morning. Amen. Uh, in the Greek, the gospel means good news. It means that I am bringing you the word according to when Jesus walked around on this earth. It is the life and the legacy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the gospel. And it's the good news. I want to speak to you on the good news this morning about traveling. Traveling. You know, I read on the news, read in the newspaper, and I heard on the news that a lot of the insurance companies was giving people a portion of their money back and, and, and giving them uh, breaks on their policies because during the in-home shelters and at-home shelters and all the uh, manufacturing places being closed down, people wasn't traveling as much. They wasn't ripping and running up and down the road. And, 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 and I thought about that, and which was true, because me working uh, up in Blue Springs every day, I was traveling uh, closely 40, 50 miles a day uh, to get back and forth to work. And I was zooming up and down the road, going back and forth. And, and, but since the pandemic, COVID-19, I've been getting um, three weeks to a, a, a gallon of gas. Haven't been really moving. So the auto, automotive uh, uh, insurance places started giving refunds back. And I finally got one myself the other day. And it said that people weren't traveling much. The airplanes, the... the uh, start suffering. They, they, there are not many people flying in the friendly skies, as they say. Uh, the uh, cruise ships, uh, no one is traveling, in other words. So this morning, uh, the, the Holy Spirit put in my spirit to talk to you this morning about uh, traveling. Which road are you traveling? The scripture I just read, Matthew the seventh chapter, verse 13 and 14, Jesus informs us that we all have a choice to make concerning the path to our eternal destination. Yeah, you 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 got a choice in this. It's going to be either our way or God's way. And that's the choice that is laid before. There's no, there's no third way now. Don't get me wrong. And, and this way is laid 
before everybody, everyone that has breath in their body. We are commanding in scripture to be not conformed to this world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. See, there's so much clutter, there's so much junk, and there's so much garbage that they get a chance to filter itself through our mind each day. What you talking about, Red? I'm glad you asked. It gets there by us looking at TV, internet, social media, conversations with people, reading. It gets there. TV. But the call from God this morning is for all of us who confess that we have been saved, that we have been born again. He calling us to cleanse ourselves. He calling us to, to flush out the clutter in our minds. And we have to do it by watching our minds with the word of God. And the word of God is the only thing that can suck this garbage out of our mind on a daily basis. And none of us is without an excuse. Jesus has made it in plain text right here. We can convince ourselves through reasoning or persuasion as to how we think we should live. And how we should live our own life, this is my life, I can live it like I want to live. But God created mankind in his image. And he created us for his purpose and his glory. Lord, help me this morning. Jesus tells us this morning that there are two gates or two paths of life we can take here on earth. We can either take the gate that is described as the narrow gate that leads to life everlasting with God the Father, or we can take the wide gate, the wide gate that the world is traveling. And when we take the wide gate, be understood this morning now that you will spend eternity separated from God when you transition from earth to eternity. Which road are you traveling? In the last few weeks, you had a, a, a lot of chances to get started on your road. Had a lot of time on your own. But because of Jesus' love and kindness towards us, he warns us and encourages us to, to take the road that leads to life, church. Take the road that leads to life. The narrow road is the path that is led by the Holy Spirit. I want to be on the narrow road this morning. I want to be traveling on the narrow road. It's for those who confess Jesus Christ as Lord. It's for those who have purpose in their heart that, and don't compromise. See, a lot of times we'll compromise with the enemy. He'll come in and he'll say, well, did God really say that two women couldn't marry or, or two did don't compromise this morning? Jesus said himself that the narrow road is found by few. First Peter 4 and 18 said, it is hard for the righteous to be saved. What will become of the ungodly and the sinner? The wide way, the, the wide road is, is the path of deception. And it is led by Satan, who is the God of this world. Now, now I, 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 
So much wrong is going on right now in this world. We have people carrying out justice for themselves. We have people that have started calling wrong right and right wrong. We, 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 we think we're, we're about to get well, over the flattening of the curve in this pandemic and, and the numbers steady going up. And then throw in the murder hornets. God is trying to get our attention. Have, have anybody beside me thought about they said that heat slows down and kills the coronavirus? But we're in the middle of May and we have having frost and 30 degree weather. What road are you traveling this morning, church? A path that Jesus described as being wide and full of unbelievers. A path roadway that has many deceived right now. They believe in that they're on the best path because they're with a crowd and they're eating and they're drinking and they're, they're being merry, they're enjoying. Now, I, I've seen on TV where the Jordans came out the other day, the new Jordans, and they were crowded up four city blocks. The good crowd, the fun crowd, the crowd of compromise, the crowd of rejection of God's word, his power and authority. Jesus said the wide road is full and it's many. A lot of people shall find it. They find pleasure on it and they arrive there and many will never get off of this road. It is a road that they will travel to the end of their life in a road that Jesus declares in his word that ends in destruction. Which road are you traveling this morning? You do have a choice. It's God's way or the narrow way. If I don't leave you with nothing today, I want to leave you with one point. I want everybody out there in, in social media world, everybody out there I need them to know that no one can serve God and the pleasures of this world at the same time. Satan has deceived many to believe this, but Jesus said that there is a choice to be made, and it's to be made by you. If you're thinking that you can travel on both sides of the road, the enemy has Food you. The Bible said we either hot or cold. Jesus said that if you not hot or cold, you, you, you try to be lukewarm. And he has already given us a word that you'll find in Revelation. The third chapter, he said, I, I know your works. That you're neither hot nor cold. Cold nor hot. I wish you were cold or hot. So then because of you being lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now everybody here know that we are bodies made up most of the water. You like your water ice cold. But have you ever tried to swallow some lukewarm water? It can be the nastiest thing that you ever put in your mouth. That's what Jesus is trying to get us to see today. That being lukewarm, we will be some of the nastiest stuff that ever been in his mouth. Today is a day for you to stake your claim on who you will live for. Because time is winding down, church. Nobody knows their death day. But people are leaving here 
every day, young and old alike. And guess what? Many of them did not get a chance to switch their path. Many of them didn't get a chance to switch the road that they were traveling on. They left suddenly and without warning. See, I, I believe in not sugarcoating the word. I, I believe in, 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 in giving you the word straight forward. Oh, yeah, I, I know the word will have you to prosper financially, but also the word will have you prospering in your soul. I believe in your soul prospering. God does not want any of us to perish without knowing him. There are so many, so many uh, uh, smoke screens being set up for us these days. Matthew 7, 21 says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Everybody going to want to go to heaven, but get this. The Bible says hell enlarges itself every day. I got a question for you. Doing the will of God. I thank God right now that you have made up your mind and that we are saved by faith through grace and not of works. I thank God that right now we have faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank God right now that Romans 10 and 9 said, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and we believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died and on the third day he rose from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you confess and you believe those words this morning, you are saved. And you have a choice to the straight and narrow path. Start traveling. Stay on it. Don't be deterred. Don't be deterred to the left or to the right. Continue straight forward on that path. I guarantee you, in the end, you will hear the master say, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on and be a ruler over many things. I thank God that somebody here in Facebook world, somebody here in social media, somebody in Palestine this morning got a made up mind and they want to see Jesus. They want to look up on his face. God will honor that. All you got to do is continue to honor Jesus Christ not only in word, but in the way you live, start doing the things of God and watch and see how God will honor your life. Amen? Amen. I pray that you are traveling on the right road this morning. I thank God that in the next few weeks that we will have a chance to start coming back together. The devil is alive. And as we leave here today. Leave knowing that God inhabits the praises of his people. Somebody can get their victory today through their praise. Amen. Amen. Until next week, the good news will be continued and stay on the right road. Amen.